A close relative goes missing, you call the police. But where do you turn if they disappear in some far distant part of the world? I know that somebody out there knows that what, what has happened to my brother. Also this week, we tour the radioactive shell of Chernobyl. So the Geiger counter is approaching 20, but to be honest, I thought it'd be a lot higher. And visit a millionaire's playground in southern Brazil. Hello and welcome to Fast Track, I'm Rajan Datta. Now, I don't know about you, but from my late teens, I developed a wanderlust, a natural desire to break out from my own little small patch and explore the big wide world. It's an exciting feeling that can stay with you throughout the rest of your life. And part of the thrill is going into the unknown. But that can turn into a nightmare for a family whose close relative goes missing while on holiday, sometimes without trace. It was reported on the news today that another loved one has gone missing. Michael Dixon, 33 years old, working as a journalist in Brussels in Belgium. Missing. The last time he and his kid brother David played tennis together was here in South London. A seasoned traveller, Michael arrived in Costa Rica alone in 2009 in good spirits. He said that that's the best way to, to meet people is by travelling alone and you get to, to do more sometimes. You know, he, he's very a self-sufficient guy. He, he, he likes the company, he loves reading and listening to music. So this is kind of his, his ideal time uh, on holiday, spent on the beach reading a book and listening to music. <laughs> Tamarindo, an established tourist town, was Michael's third port of call in Costa Rica. The last confirmed sighting of Michael walking out of a hotel, the Via Macondo, was on Monday the 18th of October, shortly after he'd checked in. David and his parents didn't find out Michael had gone missing until a whole week later, when his brother failed to show up for work in Brussels. We then know that the, the Foreign Office were alerted three days That's after... the UK Foreign Office. Yes, yeah. they were alerted three days after he, he, his disappearance, but they decided not to, to inform the family, as they said people choose to go missing all the time, which to us is a very irresponsible thing to say, uh, seeing that all of his belongings, including his passport and credit cards, were still in his hotel room. Uh, when later questioned about this, they, they said that it was a wrong call. David thinks this wrong call critically impeded all progress in the subsequent attempts to find him. The Red Cross told him and his two cousins on their arrival in Costa Rica that the trail had gone cold. Who knows, we might have found Mike or even known what happened to him if we had known him in time. You know, these are the, the golden hours or the golden days of, of, a, of a missing person's case. You know. It didn't stop Michael's family hiring sniffer dogs, speedboats, three private detectives and spending endless hours themselves trawling through mangroves around the tourist town in desperation. A, a further complication, David says, is that nobody wants to take ownership of the case, partly because of his brother living in one country and being a citizen of another, but also because of a flaw in international protocol. Myself and my cousins uh, found quite a few new amount of clues having been there ourselves, so we thought let's get the, the British police involved. Uh, now the British police said they cannot get involved unless they receive an initial request from the Costa Rican police. The Costa Rican authorities have said that they are welcome to come, but we refuse to send an official letter inviting them to, to come over. So once again we, we, we're stuck in between. One common complaint amongst many families is that there is no single single global body able to coordinate a search for a missing individual. Families can't be rewriting the book every time somebody goes missing, you know, they, they, we need some kind of process. At the moment, the, the Foreign Office has no set process of what to do in the event of uh, a citizen going missing abroad. 
This difficulty in getting one official body to take responsibility is shared by the Bice family from the US, whose 22-year-old son Austin went missing in Madrid earlier this year. He was studying there for a term and disappeared on a Friday night out. Although the police originally said they couldn't find him in the river, after it was drained eight days later, Austin's body was discovered. The police went from a missing person to an accident. So if you do that and there's no crime involved, the, you, the US, the FBI, cannot be involved unless it's a crime. So they essentially kept the FBI out of it by going from a, um, from a missing person to an accident. And so there was nothing that the FBI could do. We come into this naively. We think, um, you know, when you call the embassy, some career diplomat is taking a binder off the shelf and going to calm you down and say, okay, here's, here's, here's how we proceed in these kinds of cases and here's the kind of information we need from you. It doesn't happen that way. What happens is uh, you get some version of the question, well, what do you want us to do? We wake up every day. A month after Michael's disappearance, his family held a press conference in London and then another 11 months later. David's also produced T-shirts, released the record and used every possible strand of social media in an effort to raise awareness. But there is a common frustration with relatives of missing loved ones about the myths that are perpetuated by mainstream media. The first one being uh, that it's primarily uh, young attractive women who are most at risk. Um, we've, of the cases that we've, uh, we've seen, we've got about, um, about five women uh, missing out of you know, close to two dozen uh, men uh, since, uh, just since May of 2009. There's a, a certain perception that if a man disappears, particularly in, in an exotic locale like the Caribbean or Latin America, well, he just doesn't want to be found, or he was up to no good and got what he deserved. And um, again, we have not found that to be the case. David refuses to accept the conclusion drawn by the Costa Rican authorities that Michael drowned in the sea on that fateful afternoon he'd left the hotel. Eleven other visitors have been reported missing in Costa Rica since Michael's disappearance, and David thinks that suggests something more sinister. We personally think that Michael is a victim of crime. We've heard from quite a number of people, quite a few witnesses, that Michael was last seen in a bar surrounded by some um, people who are, who are known to be troublemakers in, in, in the local community. Costa Rica is a beautiful country. I've been there three times and there's a lot to see. The, the ecotourism is very nice. But they've got this huge problem of crime, which they need to face up to and they need to take, take ownership of. We asked the Costa Rican government for its response to David Dixon's claims. However, it couldn't reply in time for this programme. In the meantime, for all families going through this kind of trauma, the Bices in California have this advice. For anybody else that has something missing, I just keep hope. They have hope. Unfortunately, we don't have that hope because ours was found. But keep looking. Gosh, if, if Austin was still there, we'd, we'd be over there looking for him. So keep looking. Don't, don't give up.